welcome back guys, it's Matsmus, and thank you for joining me on today's video. Today we are talking about attack helicopters, and in this particular case, a quite peculiar one. As you can see, this one has no rear tail rotor, the KA-52 Alligator. I must admit, I've never even noticed that this thing did not have a damn tail rotor, but it is extremely interesting and a very impressive piece of equipment. Now, in the Western world, and pretty much all over the world, we big up our own equipment. We think it's the best, we think it's the greatest. I'm not a fan of doing that. Uh, but it is rather interesting to always see that in the Western world, we are so adamant that the Apache Longbow and Apache Attack Helicopter is the best in the world, hands down. Best, greatest, whatever. Now, I'm not going to go into what's best and what's not. What I will say is, though, that this helicopter, in my eyes, only as of recently after doing some research and looking into it more, is definitely put on the sidelines a little bit. The KA-52 Alligator is an impressive piece of equipment. However, it really does not get put in the spotlight as much as I feel it really should do. The technology and the capabilities of this aircraft are extremely impressive. Now, as I mentioned before, I really haven't known much about this aircraft until recently, and I thought, you know what, let's do a video on it. Let's talk a little bit about this impressive piece of aviation and military hardware, and go over its specifications, features, and, you know, my own personal opinion on it. But... Who better to talk about Russia's upstanding and most capable attack helicopter than another Russian? So today, guys, we are actually going to be discussing this helicopter from a narrator from Russian descent who will actually explain pretty much every single feature of this helicopter and its features, capabilities, and specifications. So I hope you enjoy, guys. Here we go. Let's learn about the KA-52 Next Generation Attack Scout Helicopter. Rosoboron Export and Russian Helicopters are presenting the K-52, a new generation scout attack helicopter. The K-52 day-night all-weather scout attack helicopter is designed to destroy enemy tanks, armored vehicles, and soft skin military equipment, manpower and helicopters at the forward edge of the battle area and in the tactical depth, as well as to provide target reconnaissance, target assignment and target designation for cooperating helicopters and army command posts. Its power plant includes two powerful VK-2500 engines rated at 2400 HP each. The helicopter uses a high-performance coaxial rotor. An important feature of the K-52 is the absence of the tail rotor, which significantly improves the efficiency of helicopter control and flight safety. The absence of power consumption by the tail rotor, combined with a high-performance rotor, gives the K-52 a 20 to 25 percent advantage in thrust weight ratio over all known attack helicopters in the world. As a result, the K-52 offers unparalleled maneuverability and an unprecedented hover ceiling out of the ground effect of around 4,000 meters, which exceeds the hover ceiling of all known attack helicopters around the world by an average of 800-1000 meters. The service ceiling of the K-52 is at least 5,500 meters. Stores are mounted on six hard points. Increased maximum weapon load and longer maximum flight range with maximum weapon load are the competitive advantages of the K-52 over other attack helicopters. The airborne reconnaissance and target designation system includes electro-optical surveillance and sighting system and onboard radar capable of detecting and recognizing typical ground targets and determining their location around the clock and in any weather, as well as onboard communications system that provides air-to-air -air communications and transmission of reconnaissance data to command centers as well as to airborne and land systems cooperating with the helicopter. Operating experience suggests that side-by-side -side laid out of pilots in the K-52's cockpit 
is most appropriate to conduct reconnaissance missions. The shared use of information coming from radar, electro-optical systems and navigation aids by the two pilots simultaneously reduces the search time and improves target recognition reliability. When an emergency landing of the helicopter is impossible, a crew ejection system is a reliable means to save lives of the pilots. Both crew members are ejected simultaneously. In this case, helicopter rotor blades and cockpit canopies are first jettisoned automatically and then rocket ejection units are activated. Ejection is provided throughout the entire flight altitude range of the helicopter, including at the zero altitude. When the helicopter conducts regular flights in isolation from its main base, it requires no test equipment, ground support or special aircraft equipment for its maintenance. In case of self-contained basing for two weeks, maintenance can be done by the helicopter crew. The K-52 accommodates a built-in performance monitoring system, an independent power supply source, the TA-14 power unit, and mechanical systems for weapons suspension built in the helicopter wing. The K-52 is designed for operation in desert, tropics, mountain conditions and at sea, in the range of ambient air temperature, from 50 degrees Celsius minus to 50 degrees Celsius plus, and at relative humidity of 95-98%. An important feature distinguishing the K-52 from other attack helicopters is its out-of-hangar operation. It has outdoor storage and service, without any shelters using only covers and standard blanks. Its avionics suit has been developed using the most advanced digital data processing and data exchange technologies and combines high-precision inertial satellite and radio navigation systems, digital helicopter navigation automation system, a set of reconnaissance aids including target search and track electro-optical and radar systems, as well as an onboard communications and data transfer system, weapons management system and helicopter self-defense suit. The open systems architecture of the avionics suit makes it possible to include some systems into it, both as an option and instead of existing ones. The avionics suit gives the helicopter the round-the-clock combat capability. Pilots fly the helicopter at night wearing night vision goggles, using an infrared illuminator, thermal imaging and radar terrain mapping on the basis of data surveillance system and digital terrain maps. The crew carries out search, target acquisition and aimed firing at night using an onboard radar, a day-night surveillance and sighting system, as well as external designation data. The GOES-451 day-night electro-optical surveillance and silent system includes TV search and sighting channel, thermal search and sighting channel, laser targeting channels for Vihar and attacker type guided missiles, laser rangefinder, target illuminator. The main modes of the K-52 surveillance and fire control radar are low altitude flight mode to detect obstacles in the flight direction around the clock and in any weather in order to avoid or fly around them during a low altitude flight. Mapping mode Mapping of the terrain, finding the position of the ground targets and navigation points to ensure helicopter navigation in a real tactical environment, as well as meteo mode to determine the moisture target boundaries. Airborne communications and data transfer system. It provides telephone and radio communications and data exchange with cooperating airplanes, helicopters and ground control posts. Data transfer equipment transmits navigation data, target data and other tactical situation data generated by the helicopter's onboard reconnaissance set in digital format from the helicopter to ground and air subscribers. The Breeze broadband radio channel transmits tactical video from the helicopter to ground subscribers. The helicopter's electro-optical countermeasure system is designed to protect it from engagement by surface-to-air missile SAM systems, including manpads and anti-aircraft artillery systems by detecting the threats and using countermeasures against attacking weapons. The helicopter is equipped with powerful modern weapons, 
movable 30mm 2A41 cannon for 160 rounds, S8COM unguided rockets with heat fragmentation warheads up to 80. Vihur and attack a type air-to-surface missiles. Up to 12 such missiles can be installed on board the K-52 helicopter. Igla S air-to-air -air guided missiles, up to four. The K-52 is unrivaled in mix of armaments and their firepower. The effective firing range of its cannon and unguided rockets exceeds the similar indicator all known attack helicopters in the world. By 800, 1000 meters. The range of Fihur anti-tank guided missile is still unsurpassed and is at least 10 kilometers. The Vihar missile flies at 600 meters per second and is superior to all known anti-tank heliborne missiles in speed in its class. The K-52 helicopter has no equal in conducting operations in the mountains due to its unmatched operational altitude and unique maneuverability. Its high thrust-to-weight ratio provides effectiveness in hot climates. The uniqueness of the helicopter is also in its versatility in performing both reconnaissance and strike missions. The helicopter is unique for its universal in both reconnaissance and attack missions. Its capability to save the crew from any emergency, fly in any weather and climate, as well as self-containment and out-of-hangar storage, continue the best traditions of the Russian helicopter industry. And moreover, we enter the new age with new technology to unveil a world of new capabilities for you. So there you go guys, the KA-52 attack helicopter. Now as I did mention in the beginning of the video, I do feel that this helicopter has been put in the sidelines a little bit. In terms of capabilities, this aircraft is doing a lot with very little. I've got to admit though, I would really be interested to see what the total cost estimate is for one of these aircraft. I know there are facts and figures on the internet, but it really doesn't go into depth exactly how much the systems would cost in terms of support, flight hours, how much they would cost to continue flying, support elements. They're probably quite expensive, just like the Apache Longbow is, so let's not forget that. You know, operational costs are a big thing nowadays, and I know it's not really exciting, you know, well, it's, you know, it's not firepower related, Matsmus, of course it's not, but it is something you've got to think about. This is quite a sophisticated bit of equipment, and with that being said, it does come with its own costs. Now, Russia has for somehow transitioned away from the rear tail rotor design into this dual rotor design, which, funnily enough, the United States is actually trying to develop their own dual rotor helicopter, both transport and attack. I recently did a video on it, guys. Go check that out if you're very interested in doing so. But I really do think Russia has hit a winner with this, you know? Trying to get rid of that tail rotor is a definite, definite plus. And not only for power ratio, speed, um, hovering height. I work in the aviation industry, guys. I work with engines in this kind of uh, dynamic. And, you know, it's really, really smart to try and get into this technology now, get ahead of the game. And Russia really is ahead of the game when it comes to this technology. They have implemented these... Uh, you know, power trains very, very well, and this helicopter is a prime example of that. So to me, that's a huge plus factor for this aircraft. The next thing for me, I've got to admit, is the armaments that this aircraft can provide. Now, some people won't really care for the fact that this aircraft does have an extra pod compared to the Apache. But when you think about it, you are increasing your firepower by an extra 50%. With only four pods on there, you're talking about a roughly 25% firepower per pod. You add two more, you're increasing your firepower by another 
50%, 25% on each side. That to me is an extremely effective amount of firepower to provide onto any kind of assets that they're trying to engage. Whether it be anti-tank missiles, you know, air-to-air -air missiles, or just anti-infantry or, you know, anti-material missiles, that's a lot of firepower to bring onto the enemy at any one time. Resupply of this aircraft is going to be a lot less, so therefore it doesn't need to fly and return for more armaments, and can stay on station to provide support to ground troops a lot longer. Being that I was actually supported by an attack helicopter in Afghanistan, the Apache Longbow, a beautiful aircraft, that was one of the biggest things that you always were nervous on when came into contact. How long are those Apaches going to hold out with their armaments for and provide support with us before they have to disappear and go and reload? This helicopter has reduced that ability even by a fraction and that's really important to ground troops being able to have an attack helicopter that can stay on flight with that ammunition on station on call to provide support. An extra couple of pods to me is a huge huge plus. I gotta admit I was a little skeptical when I looked at the gun for this aircraft. Obviously it does not have the you know independent gun that uh, other aircraft like the Apache helicopter does but still I'm sure they have upgrades and components that are allowing for that to happen in the near future. Maybe there's already systems like that out there I don't know. Also the fact that the pilots can actually eject out of this aircraft is extremely impressive. I don't know if any of you remember the GoldenEye movie with the Eurocopter where he's stuck in the cockpit and he's trying to get out and smashing his head off the eject button. Always remember that and you know having the ability to pull your pilots out of this aircraft if it is hit as an attack helicopter role especially from ground fire which is always going to be quite you know apparent in an attack role helicopter that's really really important. These guys are trained for quite some time. I'm sure they have very high skill sets and being able to provide safety for your guys flying these things after they've been hit is important. You know, you're investing not only in a piece of equipment, but the pilots that fly them, they're very skilled. Some obviously maybe even veterans uh, flying attack helicopters. You don't want to lose that as just as much of an asset than it is, you know, two, three million, whatever it may be, dollars or whatever in currency that these helicopters cost. So pilot safety is definitely something they've really taken into consideration with the aircraft, unlike some other platforms out there in the NATO world. So overall, guys, I must admit I'm extremely impressed with this aircraft. I'm going to be actually doing a little bit more research and study into this aircraft and maybe do a video on a comparison to the Apache and this one. I'm not too sure yet. I'm not a big fan of comparison videos, but maybe it's something I'll do in the future. I really appreciate you stopping by today, guys, and taking a look at this video. It really does mean a lot to me. As always, if you do want to support my channel, I really really appreciate you going to check out my patreon page uh, the link is in the description box below if you do wish to discuss more about you know this helicopter in this video or any other videos I've done in the past or just come say hello and have a chat feel free to go check out my discord channel it's basically a chat room that I have constant access through throughout the day I have my cell phone with me I can talk to you guys uh, and just chat formally um, via voice chat on discord again it's in the description box below go check it out uh, I'll be more than happy to come chat you guys or even play some games and um, so once again thank you again for watching and have a wonderful day all the best and bye bye